Hi everyone, I am Shady Malyari Lugtu and I will be your speaker for this webinar. And this webinar is entitled Stress Management for Teachers and Students in the New Normal. So like every webinar that I am doing, I would like to start with a icebreaker. So our icebreaker for this webinar is draw a pig. So you get a piece of paper and any writing material like a pencil, ball pen, or anything that you can grab right now for 30, 30 seconds. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to get your materials, a paper, and a writing material. Okay, I hope that you already have your paper and your writing material. So I want you to draw a pig, yes, a P-I-G, a pig, any kind of pig, whatever pig that you want to draw, whatever comes out of your mind right now, you can draw it. And I'm going to give you a minute for you to draw a pig. So I hope that you will be able to draw the best pig that you can. There is no right or wrong pig. So... I'm going to give you a minute. So I'm going to, I'm going to make a timer here for one minute. There it is. Here. Here. Let's time it for a minute. Any kind of pig will do. You don't need to be very conscious about it. So that's 20 seconds already. This is not a drawing test. And disclaimer, this is not a psychological test, but we will try to give you a overview, an overview of your personality with this big drawing. Okay, five seconds. And time is up. All right. So I hope that you already have your pig with you. And I want you to fold. So this is my paper with the pig. I want you to fold it in half and then in half, half lengthwise or crosswise. And then again, so that would be for partitions. Are you ready for the pig analysis? Let's see. So this is my pig. I hope you won't judge me with this. So this is my pig. If your pig was thrown at the top of the paper, so as you can see, I drew a line over here. So mine is relatively in the middle. So towards the top of the paper, meaning the upper top, 75% of your pig is at the top of the paper. It means that you are optimistic or you have a positive view in life. If your pig is at the bottom or towards the bottom of the paper, meaning 75% of your pig is at the bottom page or drawn in the bottom page, you have the tendency to be pessimistic or you, you have this tendency to think negatively of things. And if you're like me, wherein your pig is relatively in the middle part of the paper, it means that you are a realist. So you look at Things may be positively because they are positive and negatively because they are negative. So let's move on. So that's the placement of your pig. Next is your, where does your pig face? So my pig is facing in front. But if your pig is facing at the left, you, it means that you have the tendency to believe in tradition and be friendly. You may also be prone in remembering dates as well. So you are family-oriented. Yes, you're family-oriented. You like remembering dates. You're very thoughtful. And then if your pig is facing the other side, which is right, you have the tendency to be innovative and active, but may be prone to forgetting dates because you're too spontaneous. That's why sometimes you are not so good at dates. You always forget your friend's birthday, things like that, and may not have a strong sense of family life. Means you are peer oriented, 
And if you're like me, your pig is facing front, you have a tendency to be direct and may enjoy playing the role of devil's advocate. And you're also prone to neither fearing nor avoiding confrontational discussion. So, I hope you're getting a bit, a bit idea of your personality. And then let's look at the details. Um, so if you can see the details of my pig are just enough. So if you have, but they, they, I, I drew a, a little bit of details. If you can see, I already put some mud at the, at the bottom part of my pig. So if you have like me, many details, you put a lot of details. In your pig, you have the tendency to be analytical but may also be prone to be cautious to the point that you struggle with trust. So hmm, you have some trust issues. And if you drew a little detail, you have the tendency to be emotional and to focus on larger picture than rather than the other side. So then focusing on details, you also have the tendency to have to be a great risk taker and sometimes to be prone to recklessness and impulsive decision so medyo pa bigla bigla and then next if you can see i have one two three four legs drawn on my pig so what does it mean when you've drawn less than four legs maybe you've drawn the small circle it means four legs that are on the ground okay so if you do something like a small circle, small circle, circle pig. It may indicate that you are living through a major period of change. As a result, you are prone to struggle insecurities. And if you are, have four legs showing, you have a tendency to be secure and stick to your ideals. However, others might describe you as a stubborn. This is so true to me. I'm very stubborn as a person. And let's move on to the ears. So you can see my ears looks like cat, cat ears because I'm a cat baby. Anyways, my ears are, are regular ears. I, I cannot say that they are big ears. But with large ears, indicates how good of a listener you are. So I am an average listener. So the bigger, the better. The next is the long tail. This one here. Mm, just enough. So it indicates how intelligent you are. So the longer, the better. But actually, the tail, I'm just being very distraught with this. But the tail also is an indicator of your L or a libido as a person. So the longer it is, the, the higher your libido as well. So enough. Enough of this big analysis. So let's move on to the real seminar. So let us... First, discuss what is stress. So let us define stress. Stress is defined as a physical, mental, or emotional response to event that cause bodily and mental tension. Simply put, stress in outside force or event that has effect on your body and mind. So stress is everything. It may be physical, it may be mental, it may be emotional. So whatever it is that is exerting a change in your, or it is exerting tension in your body, it is called stress. So stress is a human reaction to events in our environment. So mas malamang most of us experienced stress last March nung na lockdown tayo. So like me, I'm I am actually employed in a school. I experienced a, a huge amount of stress last March because I am part of the deciding committee, the executive committee in my school. So we are actually filtering things and planning things kung ano yung magiging move, yung next move ng school. Kasi nobody is actually, um, I can say, wala talagang handa, walang prepared, nobody ever prepared for this to happen. Nung dumating yung 2020, we we're all positive, we we're all optimist na this 2020 is something new, that it will be a great year. But it happened otherwise, na parang nag-regress lahat, everything back to normal. So, all of us experience stress. Ito, y ito na yata yung pinaka-common na nangyari sa atin ngayon, 2020. So, it is a normal human reaction because there's a change in our environment. 
Pero lahat ba ng stress masama? Actually, no. There are things that we call the euro stress or yung good stress. Ano yung good stress na ito? Ito yung you got promoted. Of course, you will be stressed because you have to perform better. But this is a good stress kasi it keeps you going and it makes you want to perform better. Also, thesis defense. So, sino man dito yung nakaka-experience ngayon ng thesis defense? I know some people who are getting their thesis defense online also, like what I am doing right now. Online yung thesis defense, yung panel nila kasama sa Zoom meeting, and they have to depend, defend their thesis. Of course, kapag ganon, there is a force, attention in your environment, you will be stressed. Pero it's a good stress because you're getting productive and might as well mapasa mo with flying colors yung thesis defense mo. And also, winning the lottery. Of course, kapag nananalo ka ng lotto or anything na malaking pera, mas stress ka for a moment because you will you will feel like na, ano kaya gagawin ko dito sa pera na to? Saan ko ito i-invest? Anong business ang gagawin ko? So, you will get stressed. But those stresses are your stress or good stress. And also, yung pangalawang klase ng type ng stress is yung distress. So, distress is also known as bad, bad stress. So, example of which are difficult work environment, like what we're doing right now. Some of us are adjusting to the new normal, to work from home. So, sometimes, sinasabi yung mga naririnig ko, it is a very difficult work environment. So, nagkakaroon sila ng distress caused by dif difficulty sa pag adjust And then, overwhelming sight and sound. So right now, ang daming mga nangyayari, like when you are an introvert like me, kapag nasa mall ako, too much stimulation causes distress to me. And then threats of personal injury. Number one dyan is yung COVID-19. So dahil sa COVID-19, we're in distress because um, hindi natin alam kung yung nakakasalumuha ba natin ay asymptomatic na and, and things like that. So we are unsure of things. And there are a lot of uncertainty right now in the world. So with, with this, it causes bad stress or yung distress na tinatawag. Ngayon, mayroong mga, mayroong mga tinatawag na um, four types of stress. So ano ba tong four types of stress na ito? Ibisahin natin dun sa pinakasimpleng stress, which is the general stress. So based on the word itself, general. So most of us experience this stress. Everyone has this kind of stress. It resolve itself in day or two. So, ito mga stress na to. Example, yung mayroong kang you will get stressed because um, sa mga studentes, kailan pa naman mayroong kang prob or kailan pa naman na kailangan mong mag-shoot or kailan pa naman mayroong kang date, dun lumabas yung tigawat mo. You will feel stressed, but of course, it will solve itself a day or two. So, mawawala din yan. And no intervention is necessary or required for this. So, May mga stress na kahit hayaan mo lang, mawawala sila because it will resolve itself. So, yun yung mga tinatawag nating general stress. Pero, kailangan pa rin nating tignan ito or try to alleviate it. So, paano natin magag... Bakit natin kailangan gawin yun? Because there, the second type of stress is called the cumulative stress. Bakit yung general stress natin... Naipon niya na naipon kasi hindi mo alam i-manage yung stress mo, mag-accumulate yan, yun yung cumulative stress. So, stress build up in your body, kaya sometimes nakakaramdam tayo nung stiffness dito sa ating, sa ating shoulder. So, ako na, madalas ko nararamdaman yan kapag nagkakaroon ako ng cumulative na stress. I feel stiffness on my back and also sa shoulders ko, dito sa aking lower back. So, signs of aging, and it becomes more difficult to alleviate the symptoms. So, you may have more serious physical symptoms. Mamaya, i-discuss natin yung physical symptoms of stress. And you may also have serious mental anguish, hindi ka na nakakatulo. Yung nakaramdaman natin ngayong COVID-19, ito yung cumulative stress. Because every day, from 1, 2, nakita natin yung mga pagdami ng cases. So, it becomes cumulative. Tapos, Nagsara yung mga school, may mga no work, no pay, nag-iisip tayo, hindi natin alam anong gagawin natin. So, naging cumulative na yung stress sa atin. Kaya madalas yung iba sa atin, they are reporting in the first month of the COVID-19 lockdown or yung ECQ, hindi sila nakakatulog. It's because of the cumulative stress na naranasan natin. 
And then the next one is the acute traumatic stress. From the word itself, pag sinabi natin acute, it means mabilisan. So acute traumatic stress, it is defined as physical incident stress. So yung nangyari dong January sa Batangas and neighboring like Laguna and Cavite, yun yung tinatawag na acute traumatic stress or yung nangyari din sa eruption of Mount Pinatubo, though hindi pa naman ako aware noong nag-erupt yung Mount Pinatubo, is called acute traumatic stress. Bakit? It is a uh, normal, ito yung normal na nangyayari sa isang tao kapag merong biglaang pangyayari or tension or change sa environment. Also, ito rin yung naranasan natin nung biglang nag-lockdown na lang nung March 16. So, this is called the critical incident stress and it produces considerable psychological stress, distress din sa ating mga sarili. Kaya marami po ngayon, ito yung sinasabi nila, the first wave ng pandemic is yung physical or yung COVID-19. And then we have to open up because of the second wave, to which is the economic, na biglang bumaba yung economy natin, yung stock market, ang bababa na ng stocks, maraming nagsasara ng mga companies, ng mga restaurants, ng mga kung ano-anong establishment. And the third wave, ito yung nakakatakot because of this acute traumatic stress that we are actually undergoing or nararanasan natin. Nagkakaroon na ng mental health wave. So, your third wave is the mental health distress. So, kailangan natin i-watch out to. So, I'm hoping na it's not too late for us to discuss about it para magkaroon tayo ng awareness of it. And then, after the awareness, matutunan natin siyang i-manage. So, this is a normal reaction actually to abnormal events. Like, what is happening right now in the pandemic, sabi ko nga, abnormal ito na wala lahat yung mga daily natin na routines Dati, dapat by this time, July na, marami ng nasa school na yung mga bata, nag, nagkakaroon na tayo ng mga events, ng mga programs for Nutrition Month kasi July. Pero it, because of all this happening worldwide ito, wala lahat yung plana natin. Marami siguro sa atin, may mga plana mag-travel, but it all, it's all gone right now. So next is post-traumatic stress. So, post-traumatic stress, it can lead to PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. So, ano ba to? This is the severe stress produced by severe psychological trauma. Example nito, pwede magkaroon nito yung mga COVID-19 positive patients na nagkaroon ng mga namatayan, yung mga tao na na naaksidente, na yung mga nag-war shock, yung mga, ba mga bata na nagkaroon ng abuse, they can all have post-traumatic stress. So, this is created by unresolved critical incident stress. So, kung yung mga stresses natin na nararanasan ngayon, yung critical incident stress caused by the, by the COVID-19 pandemic, pag hindi ito na-address ng maayos, kapag hindi natin ito na-manage ng maayos, it can lead to this. So, as a advocate of mental health um, and well-being advocate also. Gusto natin na mahamper to, gusto natin mapigilan natin to, gusto natin mamanage ito in a wider area. So, it produces lasting changes. Kaya, pwede magbago yung iyong pananaw, pwede magbago yung iyong physical and emotional state because of this post-traumatic stress. So, there are four general adaptation syndrome. So, ano tong general adaptation syndrome? So, our our brain is wired differently. So, meron tayong tinatawag na fight and flight response. So, yung fight and yung first part nitong general adaptation is yung part fight or flight response. So, kapag tayo ay mag adapt sa stress, ito yung nangyayari. So, una maa-alarma ka muna. So, ano yung alarm na ito? So, yung brain mo, magsasabi siya sa'yo na, oh, may stressor, may stressor. So, it's up to you kung ikaw, if a fight may stressor or mag-flight ka. Example na lang nito is um, yung madaan ka sa isang new road, sa isang road, tapos biglang may asong mabangis. So, syempre, alarm yun. Sabihin sa'yo ng brain mo, very mabilis lang yung speak second lang yun. So, sabihin sa'yo, oh, may aso. So, Pag nakita mo yung aso, your brain will decide, stress siya, 
And then, it will decide kung mag-fight pa siya or mag-fly siya. So, ready yan. Hindi na siya five minutes wait lang. Isipin ko muna. Hindi siya ganun. Kailangan siyang mabilisan mo mapag-design due to your brain. However, it decreases effectiveness. Pag masyado ng paulit-ulit, hugot lang ako ng konti ah. Parang paulit-ulit mo nang ginagawa. Paulit-ulit na lang sinasaktan mo yung sarili mo. Mapapagod din siya. Parang kumbaga, magkakaroon na siya ng numbness. So, hindi na nagiging ganun ka-effective kapag paulit-ulit mong ginagawa yon sa yung sarili. So, yung immune system mo, which make you more susceptible to illnesses. So, kapag pasyadong laging nasa alarm state, araw-araw na lang, nasa stress ka, it can lead to illnesses. So, bababa yung immune system at alam natin, at this time being, kailangan natin ng malakas na immune system because there is still no vaccine for this and there is still no known cure for this. So, lahat ng mga cure, experimental sila, lahat ng mga cure ay iba-iba ang effect sa mga tao. So, all we have is our immune system. Then next, the second stage is the stage of adaptation. So, after alarming your brain na, yan ang stress, yung stress, if it continues, the body adapts to the stressor that is being exposed. So, kung araw-araw stress ka, parang naging almusal mo na, tangalihan, at naging hapunan yung stress, yung body mo nag adapt na. So, if the stressor is starvation, for example, dahil nagugutom ka, yung iyong stomach, liliit na yan, kaya hindi na naghahanap ng pagkain. Yun yung nangyayari madalas sa mga nagdadayat. Kung napapansin mo, after, after months of starving yourself, pag kumain ka ng marami ulit, parang mag adjust ulit yung katawan mo, pwedeng isip mo. This happened to me before, na nung tinatry kong mag-lose ng weight, I actually ate a little, so I starved myself, tapos hindi siya naging okay, hindi maganda yung naging reaction nyo sa body ko. And nung tinare ko nang kumain na normal, yun, um, nasusuka ko pag sobrang, nasobrahan ako ng pagkain. So, um, yun yung nangyayari. Nag-adapt na kasi yung katawan ko dun sa alarm. Okay. Next is, kapag nag-persist pa siya, so the first one is the alarm, second is adaptation, and third is the stage of exhaustion. So, stage of exhaustion is pag sobrang tagal na ng stress, Ito yun na yung nangyayari. So, yung body resistance may reduce or collapse quickly. So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Kailangan ma-manage natin yung stress kasi pag hindi natin ito ma-manage, mapapagod na yung fight and flight response ng iyong brain and it will cause exhaustion. Pag na-exhaust na yan, bababa na yung immune system mo and it will collapse. So, people experience long-term stress like we are experiencing right now. March, April, May, June, July. For four months already, we are experiencing this lockdown, this ECQ, nagkaroon ng MECQ, nagkaroon ng GCQ, nagkaroon ng MECQ, and still we're not normal. Marami nag-open na business, but the COVID or the NCOV virus is still there. So people experience long term and may have heart attacks, severe infections, or chronic pain or illnesses. So um, in my life, magta 30 years old na ako this year, I experienced this. Marami talaga akong yung sa sobrang exhaust, exhaustion na ng katawan ko dahil hindi ko nahayaan yung sarili ko na magpahinga. I don't know how to manage my stress before. Talagang yung katawan ko nagsasuffer siya dahil hindi ko alam i-manage to. So later on, we will be discussing kung how to manage your stress. So, there are short-term physical stress symptoms. So, itong mga to, maaaring naranasan mo. Kung naranasan mo to, hopefully, makatulong sa'yo itong pag-uusapan natin. So, ito yung mga yon. Sometimes, you feel like your mouth is dry right now dahil nag na, nag nagsasalita ako sa harap ninyo. Um, I'm recording this. Nafe-feel ko yung dryness ng mouth. So, it's because it's a good stress. I have to perform, I have to speak, I have to talk to you. I want you to learn. That is why I'm stressed. And it's making my my mouth dry. Then sometimes, yung nilalamig ka, yung mga extremities mo, or your hands, or your feet are cold, nag increase yung sweating, nag yung breathing mo, faster heart rate, Tense muscle, feeling of nausea, butterflies in your stomach, diarrhea, or dysarthria. 
So, medyo familiar, no? Sa mga students natin. Baka minsan stress ka lang, akala mo in love ka na. Pero, it can be that you are in love, that's why you're stressed. Nakita mo si crush, and you feel the symptoms of stress. So, medyo nakaka-relate siguro kayo dito. So, now, pag ulit-ulit na ginagawa mo yun, nagkakaroon ng long-term physical stress. So, ito na yung nangyayari sa atin. Siya na nakakatulog, hindi ka na nakakakain, sa mga may asawa po, nagkakaroon na ng sexual disorders, or may sakit kapag na, nagtatali kayo, feeling colds. So, yung colds po, um, frequently cold, frequent colds, ibig sabihin, lagi ka na sinisipon, feeling of intense or long-term tiredness, yung kakagising mo lang, parang pagod ka na, and prone to illness. So, kapag ganito po yung nararanasan natin, and this is our, this our long-term physical symptoms of stress. Now, meron ding behavioral stress symptoms. So, kapag yung physical mo, it is exhausted already, of course, stress is also emotional. So, ano yung pwedeng maging effect nito emotionally? Yun lagi ka yan. Ngayon, nagsasalita ako, nag ka, maybe you're stressed. And then, talking fast or loud, magmasyadong mabilis ang pagsasalita, masyadong malakas, maybe you're also stressed, fiddling, hindi mapakali, twitching, ako I experience this when I'm stressed, um, one part of my face is twitching, nail biting, grinding of teeth, dun sa mga knit grind, um, teeth grinder dyan, kapag natutulog, drumming of fingers, kapag nag exam ako I see my students and doing this, when they are exam, doing their exams, hindi nila alam yung sagot, overreacting, defensive, irritable, irrational, hostile, critical, and aggressive. So, sa mga nakikita na po natin ngayon sa sa social media, marami ako nakikita ang aggressive nila, medyo critical na sila, hostile na sila, ang daming bashers. So, bakit kaya nangyayari itong mga to? Maybe those people are stressed. So, indinihan nilang po natin sila kung maraming mga nagmabash. Or sometimes, baka ikaw din, you have to Ask yourself, baka stress ka lang before you click or before you type in. Ask yourself first, stress ka ba? Kaya mo tinatype ito. So, sometimes there, these are behavioral changes or behavioral symptoms of stress. Also, these symptoms have negative effect on your performance. So, anong nangyayari kapag stress tayo? So, nagiging, nagiging reduce yung effectivity natin. Kapag nagdadrive ka, you can be prone to accidents. So, dahil lumulutang yung brain mo, lumulutang yung mind mo, sometimes hindi mo alam na naglalakad ka na pala, meron na palang kasalubong ka na mga sasakyan, you can be in an accident. Pwede din dahil sa stress, nagiging makakalimutan tayo, nakakalimutan natin yung mga bagay-bagay, lalo na yung pagsot ng mask, sobrang Sobrang stress natin. Tandaan po natin, lagi po tayo magsuot ng mask dahil ito po is one of our protection for ourselves and for the people around us. Causing you to be very negative, yun na rin tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, stress can also make you very critical sa lahat ng mga bagay. So, lalo na po sa mga, mga bata-bata po dyan, sometimes dahil sa stress, may nakita kang post, hindi mo naman talaga binasa ang nangyayari, ang dami mo nang pinagsasabi, and then you realize what you said is wrong. And what you said is not relevant to the posting. Nakis nakisama ka lang dun sa agos ng post, ng mga comments, pero hindi naman pala talaga yun yung topic. So, be careful. Baka sobrang stress mo, ganun na yung nangyayari. You can also neglect your appearance. So, hindi ka na naliligo. Kasintabi po sa mga hindi niligo natin dahil nasa bahay lang. Ligo-ligo din pag may time. So, it is your responsibility to yourself and for the people around you. You may have poor judgment, causing you to make more mistakes and increase your absenteeism. So, dahil mag-normal na po tayo, online na classes. So, some of the schools are opening on August and I know other schools are, are opening as early as July. So, iba na po yung attendance natin ngayon. Kahit nasa bahay ka lang, kahit tinatamat ka, there is no reason for you to be absent. So, most of schools, ako, kami sa school wherein I'm employed, um, hindi excuse ang no internet connection and power interruption sa absenteeism. So, kung may power interruption, 
um, kailangan mo talaga ng pakita na merong announcement yung inyong power provider na nawala ng power talaga dun sa dun sa oras na yun. And also, kung internet interruption naman, kailangan kang bumalik kapag dumating na internet. So, kung stress tayo, sometimes hindi ka pumapasok. Pero there's no excuse right now. Kaya kailangan natin talagang i-manage itong stress na to. Performance symptoms, yun nga. Hindi maganda yung decision mo. Fine motor skills are effect- affected. Hindi ka na nag enjoy sa work mo. And yung attention span mo may be affected. So right now, kung stress ka, malamang hindi ka na masyado nakikinig sa akin. Pero I'm hoping na you will listen to me hanggang dun sa pagkatapos nito para alam mo kung paano i-manage yung stress. We have negative thoughts and your self-confidence may suffer, difficulty in concentrating, and all your energy is consumed for no apparent reason. So, paano natin i-manage yung stress? I'm going to give you eight simple tips to manage your stress. So, the first one is you have to identify the source of your stress in your life. So, it is very important to be aware kung ano ba yung naging cause ng stress sa buhay natin. So, to identify the true source of your stress, you have to look closely at your habits, attitudes, and excuses. So, madalas, yung stress natin dahil din yan sa atin. So, do you explain away stress as temporary? Ah, binipas din yan. Do you define stress as an integral part of your work or home life? So, as, a, as an adult, medyo normal stress. Do you blame your stress on other people or outside events or view it as entirely normal or unexceptional? So, again, habits mo. Do you have that habit na nahayaan mo yung stress? Sige, chill lang. Or do you take things seriously? Number two, attitude. So, do you define stress as an integral part? So, kailangan ba siya sa'yo? Kailangan ba talaga yung stress? Or hindi. And pangatlo, Yung stress ba, nakikita mo ba siya na kasalanan ng mga tao sa paligid mo or maybe sinisisi mo yung sarili mo? After that, think number two, replace unhealthy coping strategy with healthy ones. Sometimes, pag nasistress tayo, napapansin natin na tayo ay gumagawa ng mga bagay para ma-alleviate ito. Pero there are times na kailangan natin isipin kung nakakatulong ba talaga to or it causes more harm than good. Like me, I am an INFJ sa aking MBTI and according to my profile, kapag under great stress ako, I can be binge-watching reruns of TV shows or eating a lot, which is hindi maganda para sa akin. Kaya kapag nasa stress ako, kailangan kong maging aware na stress na ako. So think about ways you currently manage your stress. Ano ba yung manage yung stress mo? So, you can write a stress journal to help you identify with them. Ako, kaya alam ko kung kailan ako sa, nasa stress kasi alam ko dahil sinusulat ko kung ano yung ginagawa ko pag stress na ako. So, are you coping strategies healthy or unhealthy? Meron ako mga kilala kapag stress sila, smoke sila, or maybe they are drinking a lot. So, is that healthy? Is it giving you a healthy body kung gagawin mo yun? Is it making you productive? Unfortunately, maraming mga tao po, hindi po healthy yung coping strategy nila. So, ano ba itong mga unhealthy na ito na coping strategy with stress? Number one is smoking. So, marami po kilala, pasintabi po, mahal ko po kayo, pero I don't think that it will make you feel good. So, in the, in the long run, maaaring magkaroon to ng negative effects sa you, help using pills or drugs to relax. So, meron pong mga umiinom ng mga mga pamparelax na drugs. I will not say it. Baka magkaroon kayo ng idea. And then, drinking too much. So, wala po kong pinapatamaan. Pero kung natatamaan po kayo, mabuti naman po at natatamaan po kayo. Hindi po healthy itong mga bagay na ito. Withdrawing from friends, nagiging loner, nagiging emo, and binge, binging or junk food and comfort food. So, minsan, pag yung comfort food, sumasobra na, hindi na rin maganda. I know some people na nagiging comfort food nila, yung milk tea na may cream puff and 100% sugar, but 
try mo lang uminom ng ganon kahit once a week lang and then go and have your blood chem, chem check. Sigurada tumaas na yung mga sugar mo, cholesterol and everything. So, it's not good. Procrastinating. Hintayin na na bukas ang deadline bago gawin ng mga bagay-bagay. Zoning out for hours looking at your phone. So, if you're like this, na tinitignan mo yung phone mo, hindi mo napapansin na 10 hours ka na palang nasa Facebook, that's already unhealthy. Kasi you have to speed your screen time. But filing up minutes of the day to avoid facing problem. So, kung fill up mo na yung araw mo, gusto mo, walang time na idle ka, walang time to relax, maybe you're, st you're already stressed and you're coping with it in an unhealthy manner. Sleeping too much naman, on the other side, is also not good because as an adult, kailangan 8 hours ng queen sleep natin. Doon po sa mga bata na nasa bahay ngayon, hopefully po, huwag po tayo mag sa sobra sa tulog. And taking out your stress to others. Marami po ang kilalang ganito na kapag nasa-stress sila, they're taking it out or pinapasa nila yung stress nila to other people. So hopefully, we do not do that. And then, they're called the four A's of practice of stress management. So ano po ito? Ano yung four A's na to? Practice the four A's of stress management. Avoid, alter, adapt, and accept. So let's go to avoid. Avoid natin yung unnecessary stress. It is not healthy to avoid a stressful situation that needs to be addressed. So not all. Not all stress needs to be avoided. But there is stress that needs to be dealt with. Pero yung mga stress na hindi mo na kailangan stressin yung sarili mo, you have to avoid them. So there are a number of stressors that you can eliminate. Number one are the stress na wala ka namang control over. So, kung wala kang control over it, then don't stress about it. So, avoid unnecessary stress. Example, learn how to say no. Know your limits and stick to them. So, sa mga teachers po natin ngayon, alam ko, we're stretching our limits. We're not prepared for this. Ang dami sa atin nagputo ng mga bagong bagay. Pero you have to know your limits po. Para hindi tayo masyada na sa stress, learn to say no. Hindi naman lahat ng sinabi ng co-teacher mo at patulong ng co-teacher mo. You have to say yes. Don't be, a, don't be a yes man. So, know your limits. Know when to say no. Know when to say yes. Second time, second is, avoid people who stresses you out. So, kung nasa stress ka, kapag may nakikita ka sa cellphone mo, nakikita ka sa Facebook mo, unfollow them. You might as well block them or unfriend them. So, kung hindi siya nagiging healthy sa'yo, cut ties. Marami ka nang isip, no? Next, take control of your environment. Kung nasa stress ka sa itsura ng kwarto mo, maglinis ka. Kung nasa stress ka sa itsura ng garden nyo, ayusin mo. I believe na kapag napunta sa'yo yung burden, kapag na-burden ka sa isang bagay, it means yun yung pinapagawa sa'yo. And then next, pare down your to-do list. So, kailangan, pag mo ng umaga, Para ma-avoid mo stress, medyo bawasan mo na ko din. Maging realistic ka kung ano pa talaga yung kaya mo lang gawin for these days. Huwag masyadong overachiever na best. Next, alter the situation. If you can't avoid the stress, might as well alter it. Often, this involves changing the way you communicate and operate in your daily life. So, express your feeling instead of bottling them up. So, kung nasa stress ka sa kasama mo sa bahay, since hindi mo siya ma-avoid, since hindi mo siya mabago, since wala kang magawa, you have to alter the situation. Meaning, you have to express na, best, nasa stress ako dun sa ginagawa mong ganito. Or, kung kapatid mo siya, cups, medyo hindi ko kasi gusto, nasa stress ako pag ganito. In a good way, huwag naman dun sa magkakaroon ng World War III sa bahay nyo. You have to express your feelings, you have to accept them first and then express it in a good manner. So, alter the situation is to be willing to compromise. So, kung alam mo na hindi mo pwedeng baguhin yung sitwasyon, compromise. Kung nasa stress ka dahil ang daming ginagawa, maybe you can compromise by sleeping earlier and then waking up earlier para matapos mo lahat ng pinapagawa sa'yo. Or create a balanced schedule. I believe in the 20-20-20 or 40-20 kapag nag-aaral ako, 
I use 40 minutes to study and then 20 minutes to rest. So, wag namang masyadong magcram. So, sa mga nag-online study ngayon, I am giving you this advice. 40 minutes or kung mas likely doon, basta pag sumakit na yung ulo mo, stop. Kung ano man yung hawak mo na libro, itabi mo muna. And then, relax. Do something. Like, reward yourself with ice cream or manood ka ng video para maging balance yung schedule mo. Work-life balance din sa mga nagkatrabaho. Like, yung teachers po natin. Huwag naman po puro tayo module making, PowerPoint presentation, recording. Give chance to yourself naman para magkaroon ng balance schedule. Kailangan mo pa rin ng ibang tao. Diba? So, next, if you can change the stress or change yourself. So, kung nagsistress ka, ask yourself then kung ano yung pwedeng magawin sa sarili mo. You can adapt to the stressful situation and regain your sense of control by changing your expectation and attitude. So, huwag din masyadong mataas kasi yung expectation natin sa ibang tao. Kaya minsan nasistress din tayo kasi masyado natin pinataasan yung expectation natin. It helps sometimes to think of the worst case scenario para hindi rin tayo nahihirapan at nasasaktan. Hindi natin pinaghihirapan or pinag-uusapan yung love life ko dito. Ha? Pero, sometimes, ganun talaga. So, adapt to stressors. Reframe the problem. Like what we're experiencing right now. Naalala ko, um, nung pagka-lockdown, that, that is March 16, I'm so stressed talaga. Na, natatakot ako that there are possibilities of retrenching people. Natatakot ako na there is a possibility also na baka mawasan yung swaga ng mga tao kasi ang dami pang receivable na yung school. So, um, I, I learned how to reframe the problem by um, nung mga second day na ng lockdown, that is March 17, we called a family prayer. So, I'm with my husband, my sister, and my my grandmother uh, in, in my house, in our house. So, I called for a family prayer. And then, we're talking about, we're praying for the whole Philippines, for the COVID-19, for the pandemic. We're also praying for our family members kasi biglaan na na hindi na natin, natin namin sila makikita for ilang months. And then, we try to reframe the problem na nandiyan na siya eh. Nandiyan na yung problema ng COVID-19. Inisip na lang namin kung bakit pinapa-experience ng higher being, in my case, bakit pinapa-experience ni God, itong pandemic na to. And then, we realize that there are things that we can do na um, dahil sa pandemic, ang dami natin na realize ng mga talent pala natin dahil sa pandemic, nagkaroon tayo ng pagkakataon na mabalikan yung mga bagay na ginagawa natin before. Dahil sa pandemic, nagkaroon tayo ng mas maraming family time. So, reframing the problem helps us to adapt to it. And then, looking at the bigger picture, yun nga, um, marirealize natin na I realize in this pandemic that um, marami pa lang mga unessential na mga bagay na ginagawa natin before. Like, take for example, going to the mall. Na for the whole time, you realize na, ay, kaya naman palang hindi pumunta ng mall. Ay, kaya naman palang hindi araw-araw mag milky. Ay, kaya naman pala. So, looking at the bigger picture, mas nakita natin kung ano yung essential sa buhay natin dahil dito sa stressor na ito. So, that's how we adapt to stressors. And then, adapting to stressor also is adjusting your standards. Huwag masyado nga mataas kasi pag tinataasan mo masyado, mas nahihirapan ka. And also, you have to practice gratitude. Ito, isa to sa mga mga bagay na kailangan natin pasalamatan. You have to be thankful for the longest time even though hindi ka nagkaroon ng ayuda or maybe hindi ka nabigyan ng um, financial assistance ng gobyerno. Still be thankful kasi for the longest time na nasa quarantine tayo, hindi ka nagutom, hindi nagkasakit yung pamilya mo, at nandito ka pa rin. So, count your blessings. So, ako, mayroon akong ganitong book. Not sponsored. <laughs> Ayan, mayroon akong ganitong book. So, I have this book, and it's called Count Your Blessings. So, every time that, every day, I try to put things here in my notebook of blessings para 
makita ko kung ano yung ma-practice ko yung attitude of gratitude para makita ko kung ano yung binibigay sa akin ni Lord para ma- makapagpasalamat ako dun sa mga bagay na meron sa akin imbis na dun sa mga bagay na gusto ko o dun sa mga bagay na wala sa akin. So, there are There are things that we just need to accept. So, accept things that you can't change. Like this pandemic nga, hindi natin siya mababago. Nandito na siya. May mga bagay na hindi natin kontrolado. So, isa to sa mga bagay na hindi natin kontrolado. So, some source of stress, like I said, over and over again, this pandemic is unavoidable. We can prevent it or change the stressors such as death of loved ones. A serious illness like COVID-19 or national recession, tulad na nangyayari ngayon. In such case, the best way to cope with stress is to accept things that as they are. So, nung naging realistic na ako na na-realize ko na, oh, okay, um, it will be very long pa for things to get normal. And then, mas na-manage ko na yung stress ko. So reading against it or going against the going against the current will just make you more stressful. So accept the things that you can change. Next, learn to forgive. Yung mga excess baggage po natin, patawarin natin. So ikaw na lang ang nag, hindi nag-move on, best. So move on, move on din. Yung mga nakasakit sa'yo, it's a, it's a good way for you to un-baggage. So, tanggalin yung mga pabigat sa buhay natin. And then, it, 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 it will also help you to share your feelings. So, kung meron kang pinagkakatiwala ang tao, share your feelings with them. Make sure pinagkakatiwalaan sila at hindi nila ikakalat. So, sa so mga students, lalo na sa mga students kung saan ako naka-employ, you can share your feelings to us, yung mga guidance counselors niyo para medyo ma-uplift kayo. Next, when you're stressed, the last thing you probably feel is like doing, like doing is getting up and exercising. So, medyo balabalaw. Number four, get moving. Nung first week ng lockdown, I felt anxiety and I felt stress, honestly. So, the next week, dun ako nag-move-move. So, nung pinagpapawisan ako, I realized that um, it makes me feel better. So, kung habang nasa bahay po kayo, get moving. Magpawis tayo. And according to studies, kapag nagpapawis tayo, nag-release yung ating brain ng endorphins or mga new, mga neurotransmitters per in nagkakause yun ng happiness sa atin. Like dopamine and serotonin. Yeah. So, ano yung pwede natin gawin? You can put some music, dance with it. Ako, natuto akong sumayaw, nag-tiktok ka, yan. Pwede yan, para pawisan ka. So, since MGCQ na, pwede ka nang lumabas, pero with mask, take your dog for a walk. Pwede ka ding mag-walk, papunta ng grocery. Pero of course, practice social distancing. You stairs at home or work, imbis na mag-elevator ka. Kung pupunta ka sa mall, park your car to the farthest and then para lakarin mo, papilitan kang maglakad. Kung meron kang exercise partner, meron ako mga kilala ngayon, nag-online Zumba sila, go! And then, play ping pong or activity like yung Wii na based on activity. Hindi lang puro ML or kung ano-ano na Marvel Universe ang ginagawa natin. Connect with others. So, it will help you to connect with other people. So, there's no more calming than spending quality time with other human beings. So, dahil marami pa rin ang bawal, hindi pa rin pwede talagang mag-gather ng maraming tao, you can connect with people. Ako, I connected with my friends through Messenger and Zoom. So, you can do that as well para matanggal yung stress natin. So, Keep in mind that people, that the people you talk to don't have to be able to fix your stress. Sometimes just sharing it with other people, make it lighter. So, hindi naman kailangan na sila yung mag, magkakaroon ng sagot dun sa mga katanungan mo. Pero just knowing that you have somebody that you can talk to can help a lot. 
And of course, it's not always realistic to have a paltrose to lean on. So maybe you can have a group of people like me. I have my network in church. I have my network in my work. And also, I have my network of friends. So kailangan meron ka ding mga tao na pwedeng lapitan kung sakali man na busy yung ibang tao na lagi mong pinupuntahan. Okay. So beyond... You have to make time for fun and relaxation. So, dahil marami nga ang stressors, kailangan marunong ka rin kung paano mo siya aayusin at paano mo pabaguhin yung outlook mo. So, take charge of pros, positive. Magkaroon ka ng me time or yung tinatawag natin self-care. Ako, yung self-care na ginawa ko is I, I cut my hair shorter. I cut my hair shorter, so, and nagpakulay ako ng darker, so I, that's my need time, para mag make time for fun and relaxation, para hindi ka na masyadong ma-stress. And then also, set aside leisure time. So, pwedeng mag-swimming, may kilala ako, mga nag-set up sila ng mga swimming pool, pwede din naman yun dahil mga na-cancel lahat ng summer vacation natin, you can do that. Do something you enjoy every day. Ako, I enjoy right now doing my devotion. Nag-i-edit ako. I enjoy it so much. Then, keep your sense of humor. Ako, nanonood ako ng mga positive ng mga people. You have to be careful yung mga pinafollow natin sa social media. Not everyone who is funny actually. Eh, kailangan. Kailangan yung good fun. Yung hindi na mamahiya ng mga tao. Yung mga tao na hindi nakakasama sa atin. Kasi whatever we feed our ears and mind, nagiging tayo yun. And then, we have to consider taking a relaxation practice. Ko, I take, um, yun, yun, natutulog agad, take longer showers, and things like that. So, you have to know how to relax. Tandaan natin, stress is just desserts spelled backwards. Tingala pa stress relief toolbox. So, kapag nasa stress tayo, ikaw mas kilala mo yung sarili mo, you have to know how to do it and what to do. So, you can go for a walk, so, pwede ka dito sa mga na flash ko ngayon sa screen. You can check on things. You can make a note out of it. And then, ilagay mo kung ano yung mga nakakapagpawala ng stress. In my case, um, taking a long bath um, or savoring up a warm cup of coffee kahit na mainit. Playing with my pet, I have three. I have, we have three cats in the house and one dog. So, yung dog, they, they really know how to to deal with you, lalo na pag-stress mo. Kita mo talaga na yung dogs talaga, they love you more than their lives. On the other hand naman, yung cats, kapag nag-refer sila sa'yo, alam nila na stress ka, they absorb the stressors. You can also curl up with a good book, listen to music, and watch a comedy. Kahit three runs lang yan, okay lang yun. So, number, next is number seven, manage your time better. So, marami sa atin ay nasanay dun sa parang feeling natin bakasyon, no? So, we have to manage our time better. So, poor time management can lead to lot of stress. Kasi nga, ang dami mong gustong gawin sa isang panahon lang. Kasi nga, hindi mo na manage yung time mo better. So, when you stretch us too thin and running behind, it's hard to stay calm and focus kasi ang dami mo kailangan gawin. Plus, you'll be tempted to avoid or cut back on all the health things you should be doing to keep the stress in check. So, sometimes you forget na to eat or pinipilisan mo or sometimes hindi ka na nakakapag-socialize to people, hindi ka na nakakatulog. Pero good news, there are things that you can do to achieve a healthier work-life balance or study-life balance. So, Una, don't overcommit. Sabi ko nga kanina, learn to say no. And huwag masyadong parang dar na tayo na iniisip natin, kaya natin lahat ng bagay. Know your limits and know when to say no. Prioritize your task. So, know yung tinatawag na um, quadrant. Meron tayong tinatawag na mga important and urgent. 
ito mga bagay na to, kaya napunta sila sa urgent important kasi hindi mo sila kaagad ginawa. You have to focus na yung mga bagay na ginagawa mo are in the important, not urgent. Para mas mapag-isipan mo sila. Yung mga bagay naman na not urgent, not urgent, not important, tanggalin mo sila. And yung mga na important and urgent naman, sometimes you have ito yung mga nagkakos ng stress sa atin. So, iniiwasan natin yung mga nasa important, urgent, important, and yung mga nasa not urgent, important, kailangan nating focusan. Break projects into small steps. Huwag masyadong feeling mo matatapos mo yung isang project sa isang araw. So, kung imposible siya, you have to break it out and plan kung paano mo ididil ito, brick by brick. Delicate responsibility. So, sa mga teachers po natin, kailangan po matutunan natin na kung hindi natin kaya yung isang bagay, magpatulong tayo sa ibang mga tao. Dun sa mga heads naman po ng department, huwag masyado matakot na magtiwala dun sa mga tao sa baba natin. Like for my case, ako pinagkakatiwalaan ko yung mga kasama ko sa office that they can deliver kung ano yung kaya nilang i-deliver. Ngayon, kung hindi nila nagawa yung isang bagay, I will not be stressed about it. I will be thankful na ginawa nila yun yung mga inuutos ko sa kanila. And I know, ginawa nila yun dun sa best na kaya nila. Next, in addition to regular exercise, we have to have a healthy lifestyle. So, increase your resistance to stress kapag healthy lifestyle natin. We have to eat healthy. Yan, marami-raming gulay po yan. Reduce caffeine and sugar. So, maybe two cups of coffee is enough. Huwag po natin gawing water. Eight cup, eight glasses of water po. Hindi po eight cup of coffee. Okay? Avoid alcohol, cigarettes, and drugs. And get enough sleep. So, as I end this, as I end this webinar, I would like to remind everyone to slow down, keep calm, be positive, take it easy, unplug, enjoy life, have fun, breathe, relax, go outside, and meditate. So, I'm doing all of this. This is my um, stress relieving toolbox. So, ito yung ginagawa ko. Whenever I feel stressed, I slow down. I'm trying to keep calm, trying to be positive and see the silver lining on things, Take it, taking things easy, sometimes putting my phone in airplane mode, enjoying life every day, having fun with people around me, doing breathing exercises, relaxing exercises, going outside with precautionary measures, smiling, and meditating with the Word of God. So. If you have one other webinars na major related po sa psychology, theology maybe, or education, um, you can comment on the comment box below para po matulungan ko po kayo. I'm hoping na may positive na nangyari, mas naintindihan niyo po yung sarili niyo dito sa webinar na ito. And I'm really hoping that I'm helping you out. So again, I'm Shady Magyari Lupu. And in YouTube, if you're not yet a subscriber, I'm hoping that you subscribe to this channel and you like it. Um, if you like this video, you put a thumbs up also. And also, if you would want to comment down below, hopefully, positivity po yung comment po natin. So, I'm, I want to thank you for taking time for this webinar and have a blessed day ahead.